All right, so we're gonna be learning about context-free grammars and parse trees today. So here we got SIPSER 2.1 and we're gonna go over the solution to this problem. So we got this context-free grammar right here. E is the start variable and we got two other variables right here, T and F. So here for the first rule, we're gonna have E going to E, I meant to put a plus here, E plus T or T. And then, so that's referring to two different rules. T goes to T X F, so X and plus are not an operator, they are just terminals. So over here we have the X and the plus appearing over here. So T X F, T is the variable, F is a variable, X is just a terminal, F is another variable, so we have two rules again here. And F is going to go to left parenthesis, also a terminal, because we see it over there. And uh, variable E, and then the right parenthesis, or just the terminal A. And so for all of these over here, we can clearly see that all of them involve the letter A. So essentially we have to go from up here down to over here in some way, because there's no A anywhere else other than right here. Okay, so we got to make a parse tree for just the letter A now. Well, we always have to start with the start variable. So that means that we're going to make a node right here just for the start variable, which is E. Now we have a choice of whether to apply this rule or to apply this one. Well, we can't apply this one because that means I'm going to generate the plus character. And in a context free grammar, you can't get rid of a uh, terminal once you actually generate it. So we can't apply this one, so we got to apply that one. And we're given the promise that, the, that this grammar can actually generate the character A, at which point, if it can't, then this right-hand side would fail. But we are guaranteed that it'll actually generate the thing. Okay, so now we're at T. So the only node under here is T, so we gotta work with this, uh, uh, this uh, node T. So then now T, it, we could apply this one again, uh, this rule, or we can apply this one. Well, we can't apply this one for the same reasons as before, because this terminal would be generated and it's not present here. So we have to apply this one. So again, there's gonna be one node under here, which is gonna be the F, which is the right-hand side of that rule. And then now, F, it better be generating just that letter, that letter A right here. Because that's the only thing in the string that we need to, that we're able to generate. Okay, so then now let's do this one. So again, we gotta start with the start variable at the top. Well then now, we can't make a plus because there's no plus here. So again, we gotta go to T. Then in T, well, we got the X here. So we may or may not generate this. It turns out that we will use this rule right here instead of this one, because if we apply this one, the only way we can ever get back to the X here is if we generate the left and the right parentheses, if we went this way. So we gotta go this way. So then now we're gonna have two children under here, which uh, actually three, sorry. So that's gonna be the T first, because that's the first thing on the right-hand side, then the X, and so nothing is gonna appear under the X because it's a terminal. And then we have the F over here. Press F in the chat. <laughs> so then the T here is gonna make the things that are on the left side of this X right here. And then the F is gonna make the things on the right side of that X. Well, T is gonna make just that letter A. Well, it's only responsible for that. Well, T has gotta get down to here. So T must do the F A route again. So we gotta go the F that A route. And then the F over here is gonna make the things to the right of the X, which is just an A over here. And F can just make that directly. So we can just do it pretty simply like that. All right, so then now let's do the A plus A plus A. And it's pretty clear we're gonna apply this rule twice because there's two pluses there. So we're gonna have E at the top as always. And then what's underneath it? Well, if we apply this one, then we could in principle come back up, but either we'll make the X or we're gonna have left right parenthesis to be able to get back up and, and uh, execute this rule again, which uh, we don't wanna do because it's not over there. There are no parentheses over there. So now we gotta apply this rule, which means that we gotta have three children under here. We're prolific, we have three children. <laughs> so we have an E here, then, then a plus, and there's gonna be no children under this because that is a terminal. And then we're gonna have, in this case, a T. So then that means that we have a choice now. Well, 
it turns out we won't have a choice, but in principle, we have a choice. What is this plus referred to? Does it mean the left plus or the right plus? Well, in principle, it could be either because it's a context-free grammar. It turns out that it'll be the right plus. And the reasoning is that if this was the left plus, then the T right here has got to make the right plus. Well, in order for T to make the plus, it's got to go through the F rule. <laughs> it's got to go through the F rule and then come back up to be able to get the other plus. Well, here, then that means it's got to make parentheses. And there's no parentheses on the right-hand side over here. So that means that this plus must be this one. And so therefore, this T right here is going to be responsible for everything to the right of that plus, And then the E here is going to be responsible for the things to the left of it. So this kind of grammar is called, uh, well, it's a context-free grammar, but the E kind of is like a, an expression in some sense. You can add two expressions or multiply two expressions, or you have an expression within parentheses or uh, a character. And, and so this is used in programming language parsing. But anyway, so here, this E is going to make this stuff. Well, it can do the plus directly. So this E is going to have itself have three children. So it's going to have an E on the left side, a plus, no, not a plus, and then a T here. So nothing under this plus, again, because it's a terminal. Well, this plus is the left one, so this E has to make the singular A right here. So again, we got to go through the grammar from E all the way through. So this E is going to make a T, which is going to make an F. Needed to give myself more room here, probably. So it's going to make the E is going to make the T, make the F, make the A, just like we did before. Well, this T is going to make that middle A, and we can pretty easily do that just by doing T, F, A. So T is going to make F, which is going to make A. All right, then, then this T is going to make that final A. And so we, we just did that work. So T, F, A, like that. And this is a unique uh, parse tree because of the reasoning we had that this plus had to mean the right one and not the left one. All right, so then now let's do this guy, which has uh, double nested parentheses. So that means effectively we've got to apply this rule twice. But that means that since there's an E in be inside here, that means we've got to go all the way through the grammar twice. So let's start at the top, which we always have to do. Well, we can't apply this rule because that means we've got to make a plus. So we've got to go TF route. So T, F. And then now once we're at F, we're going to make one application of this. So here, these parentheses mean the outer parentheses, because if they meant the inner ones, that means that we must have an ability to make things on either side of this, but we don't, because this left is the leftmost thing that it sees. So here, we're going to make the, although it won't matter here, but uh, we're going to have a left parenthesis, so nothing under here because it's a terminal. Then we're going to have an E right here. I'll put it to the side to, so it's easier to draw. And then we're going to have a right parenthesis under here. Again, nothing under here because it's a terminal. So then E has got to go all the way down through and uh, apply this rule again. So it's got to do the TF thing again. So T, F, and then do the left, E, right again. Well, then now in the middle, this E is responsible for now making the singular A. So it's got to go all the way through again. So T, E goes to T, goes to F, goes to A. And that is the complete parse tree for this um, subpart. So it's a quick introduction to context grammars and parse trees. Hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts and comments down below about parse trees. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.